From the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel, with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Please join us in this prayer to St. Joseph to help us prepare for the birth of Christ for the second week of Advent. Hail, Guardian of the Redeemer, Spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to you God entrusted his only Son. In you Mary placed her trust. With you Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a Father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I'm Father Dan Donovan. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from Greta Brolrup of Terrace, British Columbia. This Mass is offered for the intentions of her children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, in memory of her husband, Eric Brewrup, who died in 2009, for the living and deceased members of the Nielsen and Brewrup families, and for the souls in purgatory. Our thanks to Greta for making it possible for tens of thousands of the faithful across Canada and around the world to begin a new week by sharing in this celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your, and with spirit. your spirit. Today we, commemorate, we celebrate the memory of St. Ambrose, a fourth century bishop of Milan, a theologian, a great influence on St. Augustine. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You gain to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who made the Bishop St. Ambrose a teacher of the Catholic faith and a model of apostolic courage, Raise up in your church men after your own heart to govern her with courage and wisdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these, he who brings out their hosts and numbers them, Call on them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who waited for the Lord shall renew their strengths. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. Oh, bless the Lord, my soul. It is the Lord who forgives all your iniquities, 
who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. Oh, bless the Lord, my soul. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. Oh, bless the Lord, my soul. Alleluia. coming to save his people. Happy are those prepared to meet him. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus spoke to the crowds and exclaimed, Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's Gospel contains one of the most consoling and encouraging of the many sayings of Jesus which have come down to us in the New Testament. He's speaking to ordinary people like ourselves, people who at one time or another in their lives find themselves weary tired out, exhausted by carrying what sometimes seems to be impossible burdens. They might have to do with health or advancing age, with financial difficulties or family conflict. The possibilities are all but endless. All of us, if not at this moment, then at some point in the future, will find ourselves worn out by burdens of one kind or another, as true as that is, it's clear that the burdens that some people are obliged to carry are far heavier than those borne by others. To us, and especially to those among us whose burdens at this time are particularly heavy, Jesus promises that if we but turn to him, we will find rest. Here is so often in the Gospels, one has to wonder exactly what Jesus is promising and the kind of impact it will have on the particular burden we are carrying. He's clearly not promising a miracle in every case or a radical improvement in one situation, especially when it involves others or health or a lack of money or a struggle to rebuild one's life after a natural disaster. Jesus encourages us to come to him, to believe in him, to entrust ourselves into his hands. We come to him seeking not only his help in carrying our burdens, but we also seek spiritual gifts, gifts that he's so willing to pour out upon us, gifts like compassion and forgiveness, acceptance, peace, and renewed courage. Coming to him enables us to see ourselves and our struggles from his point of view. Far from being meaningless, our burdens are part of some mysterious plan of God for our life and for our salvation. In the second saying of today's reading, the emphasis is less on what Jesus is ready to do for us 
and more on what we have to do in order to share in the gifts he offers us. Take my yoke upon you, he says, and learn from me. With these words, Jesus invites us to follow him, to listen to and learn from him as our teacher, to become his disciples. Many of us have either heard or read parts of the Gospels on multiple occasions. We know in some detail the more famous parables of Jesus, as well as the main elements of his moral teaching, including his summary of the commandments in the twofold commandment of love of God and love of neighbor. Some of us have heard these texts so often that we hardly are conscious of them as they are being read. What Jesus in today's gospel is asking of us is something more. We need to take time and meditate on his teaching and above all, to put it into practice. This is what Jesus means when he urges us to take his yoke upon us and to learn from him. The relationship with which he invites us to is suggested by the story of Martha and Mary, two sisters who welcome Jesus into their home. Mary sits at the feet of Jesus in order not only to learn from him, but also to learn about him, to deepen her understanding of who and what he is. What Jesus invites us to learn about him in today's reading is that he is gentle and humble of heart. Like us, Jesus is capable of experiencing emotions of various kinds, including anger, disappointment, and sorrow. The emphasis, however, in today's reading is elsewhere. There is an almost maternal quality to the way in which he presents himself to us as gentle and humble of heart. This is the opposite of the warrior king for whom at that time so many longed. Words like humble and gentle evoke the Beatitudes. They proclaim, blessed are those who are meek and merciful, those who work for justice and peace. St. Paul echoes the teaching of Jesus when he speaks of the fruit of the Spirit as love, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, and gentleness. Because Jesus is gentle and humble of heart, he promises us to turn to him for rest for our souls. At the same time, he invites us to learn from him, to be like him in our relationship with others. Today's first reading is from the prophet Isaiah. It and the responsorial psalm echo much of what Jesus says in the gospel. The prophet and the psalmist apply to God a language similar to what Jesus uses of himself. The psalm contains a saying that comes back a number of times in the book of Psalms, as well as elsewhere in the Old Testament. It reads almost like a definition of what God is like. The Lord is merciful and kind, slow to anger and abounding with steadfast love. If today's gospel focuses on the person of Jesus and on what he can and will do for us if we but turn to him, the passage from Isaiah focuses on God, and more specifically on God, the creator of all that is, and on his relationship to his people Israel. Isaiah has an acute sense of the majesty and greatness of God of his transcendence, of his otherness from everything that is not God. Isaiah seems to have lost patience with his contemporaries who are lacking in their trust in God. They complain that he's not intervening on their behalf and is probably not even aware of their plight. They have no real sense of who and what God is. The Lord is the everlasting God, the prophet declares the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Far from being distant from and indifferent to us, 
God is near at hand and is always ready to respond when we turn to him for help. He gives power to the faint, the prophet says, and strengthens the powerless. Isaiah declares that those who wait for the Lord, those who believe in him and trust in his continuing guidance of them, will find their strength restored. The passage comes to a climax with an image that we find in the story of the, of the Exodus. The people have arrived at Sinai and are preparing to enter into a new relationship with their God. In order to assure the people that he will indeed be with them, the Lord reminds them of all that he did for them in their escape from oppression in Egypt. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, he says, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. In today's reading, the prophet declares that those who wait in trust and hope for God's intervention will find their lives strengthened. They will mount up with wings of angels, wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Heavenly Father, during this Advent season, we offer our community prayer for all those in our daily TV Mass intention book. We ask our Blessed Mother to intercede with her Son on behalf of those searching for hope, joy, and love as we prepare to celebrate the birth of Jesus. For those suffering from loneliness and abandonment, that relatives and neighbors will be inspired to reach out to them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to violence and to the anger and animosity that so often lead to it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace throughout the world and especially in Africa and Ukraine, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor and the homeless and for all those who have difficulty feeding and in other ways caring for their families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, help us to prepare to celebrate Christmas by contemplating Mary and Joseph, Mary the mother, full of grace, Joseph the faithful and just man. They chose hope, joy, and love rather than doubt and human pride. With them, let us walk together toward Bethlehem. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mingling of this water and wine become partakers of his divinity partaker of our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Gracious God, we ask you, wash me from my sins, cleanse me from Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we celebrate the divine mysteries, O Lord, we pray, may the Holy Spirit fill us with that light of faith by which he constantly enlightened St. Ambrose for the spreading of your glory, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. 
For as on the festival of St. Ambrose you, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words and preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this, in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with your spirit. and let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Lead us who have been strengthened by the power of this sacrament, O Lord, so to profit from the teaching of St. Ambrose that hastening fearlessly along your paths, we may be prepared for the delights of the eternal banquet through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. We gather.